Thank you. Um, yes, like I said, welcome to the basic numeracy online session. Uh, and remember to uh, to complete the register. If you have any questions relating to the technical, the system, UNISA processes, please send an email to ctntact at unisa.ac.za. If you have content related questions where you're struggling with either your BNU module or your QMI module, you can send an email to me, eboy, uh, eboyem at unisa.ac.za, and I should be able to respond or set up a session or respond to your email as well. And welcome. Today is the 15th of August. My name is Elizabeth Boy. I will be your facilitator for the rest of the semester this year. Um, we are not going to start from the beginning because the semester is too short. Um, the first semester we had uh, dealt with some of the content, uh, almost 80% of the content that BNU and QMI requires to um, give them um, some sort of an idea or a um, guidance in terms of how to write or complete your assignments your, or also, also um, give you some type of an, a guidance or assistance in writing your exam. So we covered a lot of content there. And because we didn't cover all of the content, so I decided for the second semester, we're just going to make sure that we cover most of the content that was not covered in the first semester. I've asked UNISA to also share the recordings of the first uh, semester recording so that then you can go and watch them at your own pace. If they don't update them, but I can show, I will show you where the backup copies are and you can go and watch the recordings anytime you want for the um, majority of the content. What we have covered in the first semester, it is also available online uh, where you signed in to, um, to the schedule. There is a link that says notes and recordings. If you go to that link, you will be able to access the notes for today and also for first semester. And that can will also help you when you're watching the videos, you can follow through the notes. I always use presentations and slides because it's easy, readily available information there. I just write um, when I need to do some activities. So you will have all the notes on there as well. Okay. So for those of you who it's their first time attending basic numeracy, I just want to orientate you so that you, um, along the way, when we are busy with the sessions, there are no confusions as well, because these are skills numeracy training workshops that are not module tutorials um, related um, uh, sessions. So yeah, we deal with skills, how we help you unpack the content in a way that it makes it easier for you to understand in order for you to be able to do your assignment and also to go and write the exam. So with numeracy, it involves being able to think, communicate quantitatively with um, the information provided to you. Uh, we help you to make sense of the information that you have in front of you. And at some point, we want to also make sure that you are aware in terms of the spatial awareness, right? And you also understand the patterns and sequences and also recognize some of the solution, uh, situations where mathematical reasoning can be applied to solve problems. But not only that, we also try to fit it in a way that it also aligns to your module, whether you're doing BNU or you're doing QMI. So I'll give you some tricks and terms and things to help you understand your module better. Right. 
and we're going to follow a structured program where you can look at um, where you find the note. There are also two Excel spreadsheets, which are our session plans. It gives you guidance in terms of the type of topics that we will be covering for this semester as well. So these are some of some of the topics that in general in numeracy we would have covered. Some of them we already covered in um, uh, in semester one. Some of them we're going to cover in this semester. So you will see that today we cover in measurement. Next week I think we cover in ratios and percentages. And these are things that we and proportions and um and ratios. These are the things that we didn't cover um, last semester, so we're going to make sure that you also have um, some sort of information relating to those ones. OK, so uh, in terms of the numeracy focus, I'm not going to go into details on this. Um, with the process that we go through is to ident is identifying the skills gap that exists within students who are doing this two modules um, and we did this in previous years because I used to be a tutor. I would look at how uh, and I was a face to face tutor, so it made it easier because I was able to see when I'm explaining some of the concepts in, in the classroom, I would identify where the students are struggling with and the type of things that they are struggling with. Like, for example, how they how do they do some calculations? How do they use their calculator to make calculations? All those things. So we ended up identifying those skills gap and formulating. Uh, then they become part of the academic or the numeracy facilitation sessions where we concentrate mostly on making sure that we close those gaps as well. And you will see that most of the time we will use just generic information and we will try to bring it back to your life experience as much as possible, if it's possible. And we will also try by all means to visualize it because sometimes it's easy. Some people learn in different ways. Um, some learn by looking at the diagram and it makes sense to them. Some learn by just looking at the numbers and it, they can understand what is happening. So we are going to try and make sure that we accommodate everyone as well. So in terms of the process that I normally follow when we do these sessions together, I use the problem solving approach, which is a Newman's prompt um, approach. This method, or this skill, it helps you as a student or as a person to understand what the problem is and how you're going to solve it. So it gives you also some of those steps because if you know the steps on how to solve that problem, then it will make it easier to answer the question that will be given to you. So normally, what I encourage you to do is the first time you see a question, read it and read it again. But now when you read it for the second time, try to read it and understand it in your own weights, in your the interpret it in the way you understand it, not in the written English that they have it, but in the the way rephrase rephrase it the way you want to understand what the question is asking you to do. Once you do that, then the next step, you're going to ask yourself, if I know this is the type of a question that I am given, what are they asking me actually to do? Are they asking you to simplify? Are they asking you to describe? Are they asking you to solve something? Or are they asking you to multiply, to divide? What is it that they are asking you? Because all this process of doing all these mappings will help you identify the things that you need. Because then the minute after you know what the question is asking you to do, then you're going to find um, ways of how you're going to answer the question. Because then you're going to use different things. Because when you were asking yourself, what does this question asking you to do? You in the same time, you will be identifying the important facts. And that is very important. Identifying the important facts are if they give you um, the length, you must write it and say they gave me length 
equals and the number that the length is. If they gave you the width, the width equals and you write it down. And then once you have all the important facts that you have uh, looked from the problem that they were giving you, you can also use a diagram to draw that. Uh, because if you look at the things that they gave you, they might say this is a rectangular shape. You can draw a rectangular shape and they will say it has a length of, you can also put the length, they have the width of this much, you put the width, you create this, uh, you visualize it in a way that it will make sense for you to further answer the question that they have asked you to do. So once you have all the important facts you have drawn, you've needed all the help, now you know what you need to do. You also need to make sure that you identify the either the equation that you need to be using. So for example, if it's an equation or if it's a formula, what kind of a formula did um, you need to use in order for you to answer this question? You write out that formula and then once all that steps are done, then you go and do your calculations. You will either do your calculation using your calculator or calculations doing it manually. What I don't expect you to do is read the question, take your calculator and start calculating. That will not help you to understand the process. So we want you to be able to know that you need to do certain steps before you can pick up your calculator and start doing your calculations. Once you have done all your calculations, right? Once you have calculated everything, I want you to go back and, ref and reflect on your answer. Sometimes in the session like this, we're going to do what we call a feedback loop, where we're gonna, you're gonna, you're going to have an exercise where you do your exercise, you have your answer, and then we're going to come back and do it together so that we can see and also help others in order for us to be aligned and make sure that we also are validating the answer that we got. And that is the process that you always need to do. Always, the minute you got the answer, try and go back and reevaluate that answer to make sure and double check that it is the correct answer. And that is the process that we're going to follow. I know that it took long, but I needed to also explain this because that will be the process that most of the weeks we're going to follow that until the end of the sessions. Um, we will be using this approach. So. I know that it, it, it might still be fresh in your mind, but you, you will hear me constantly when we're doing some activities, asking you, what do you understand that the question is asking you? What are the things that they are giving? Uh, what type of a equation or formula do we need to use here? Yeah. Um, then I will say, let's do the calculation. And then we start doing the calculation. And then I say, let's check our answer. Did we do it right or wrong? Uh, and those will be the steps that we're going to follow. So I'm not going to say it explicitly to say, let's use problem solving approach. I will just base it in our conversation so that you get used to uh, doing this as well. OK, so that is the end of the introduction. Are there any questions or comments before we start with the session today? Are there questions, comments? Nothing but on my side. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Then let's get to it. So today we're going to be looking at measurements. The only tool you need is the calculator. Other than that, you also need to remember the formulas that we're going to share with you and the um, and the SI units. Um, you will need to be able to practice that. Okay, so by the end of the session today, you should be able to learn how to convert length of units, determine the perimeter of different figures, the area of different figures, volume of different figures, and also convert from liters to cubic units. 
So when we convert length from one unit to the other, we always use the SI unit, which is the system of uh, instrument unit that we use uh, to convert from one unit to the other, and always the length we always assume or use meters. It's always assumed that for a length we will always refer to meters, right? So, in order for us to move from one unit to the other, there are certain rules that you need to remember. Now, these are your SI unit, they start from millimeters to hectometers and uh, or kilometers to millimeters actually. It starts from kilometers to millimeters. What you need to know is if you're moving from a bigger value to a smaller value, if you're going to convert from a bigger value to a smaller value, you need to multiply by 10. If you move from a smaller value and converting to a greater value, you will have to divide that unit by 10. So you always divide by 10 when it comes to meters or millimeters or centimeters, kilometers when you move it. So for example, if I want to move from 20 centimeters to 20 millimeters. So where is my 20 centimeter? My 20 centimeter. So moving from a centimeter to a millimeter, it means I'm moving from a bigger to a smaller. So it means I need to multiply by the appropriate um, value. Alternatively, you can use you can use another mathematical function to change from 20 centimeter to 20 meters. What do we know? We know that 10 millimeters is equals to one centimeter. And we want to move to millimeters. So I want to move to my X Millimeter, my X is my unknown, my number, which is my placeholder for the unit that I want to move to. And it, I'm converting from 20 centimeters. So now in MET, to simplify this, because if I know that one centimeter is equivalent to 10 centimeter, because I need to multiply, by 10, so I multiplied one millimeter by 10 to get 10 millimeter. So to simplify this, I need to crisscross. So it means my X millimeter will multiply with my one centimeter. My 20 millimeter centimeter will multiply with my 10 millimeters. So I'm going to write it right here at the bottom. So I'm going to say my 10 millimeters multiply by my 20 centimeters equals my one centimeter multiply by my x centimeters. So from here, I want to, uh, cent not centimeters, but millimeters. I want to be left with only the millimeters. So I'm going to divide the side by one centimeter divide the side by one centimeter. One centimeter and one centimeter will cancel out. And then I will be left with my X millimeters. I'm just gonna write X and this side, I am going to cancel my centimeter with my centimeter and I will be left with 20 times 10, 200 millimeters. So it means where my X millimeters that I didn't know what those are, I will be able to find it and say that is equals to 200 millimeters. If I don't apply this, I must always remember that to move from a meter to 
millimeter, I must multiply by 10. So I have 20 centimeter and I need to move to millimeter. So I'm going to take my 20 and multiply by 10 in order for it to give me my 200 millimeters. Because I need to multiply that 200 centimeter by 10 to convert it. And that's what the rule says. If you're moving from a bigger value to a smaller value, you need to convert by multiplying with an appropriate 10. Your exercise is to answer number one. We have 250 kilometers to meters. We're moving from a bigger number or a biggest unit to a smaller unit. Or I can stop right there to a smaller unit. So if I'm moving to a smaller unit there, how many tenths will I have? One, two, three tenths. Are we winning? What do we know? We know that <clears throat> there are 10 times 10 times 10. There will be a thousand. So there will be from kilometers, 10 times 10 is a thousand. So there will be 1000 millimeters in one kilometers. Oh, sorry, not millimeters, but meters. Meters. So we, if we know that we have X meters, that makes up 250 kilometers. Therefore, we're going to crisscross. Our X will multiply with 1K and a thousand meter will multiply with 250 kilometers, right? And we're going to divide that by one kilometer, one kilometer. And therefore, x one kilometer will cancel with the kilometers. Then we have a thousand times two hundred and fifty kilometers, which will be equals to two hundred and fifty thousand kilometers. Happy?
let's look at number two. Where number two it says we need to convert from a smaller to a bigger. Now, since we're moving from small to bigger, we will have to divide by tenths. So, how many? We know that there are 10 millimeters, which are equivalent to one centimeter. And here we have 1,300 millimeters, and we need our X, which will be our centimeters. So criss crisscrossing, X will multiply with the 10, we will have X, and <clears throat> one centimeter will multiply with 1,300 millimeters. millimeters and we're going to divide by 10 millimeters. Millimeters and millimeters will cancel. What else? Uh, a 10 and a 10 will cancel, so it will be 1 times 130 will be equals to x is equals to 130 centimeter because we are left with only one centimeter and that's how you convert from one unit to the other on your own at your own time you can do exercise number three four and five the same concept will apply if we move in from big to small we divide, if we're moving from small to big, we multiply. A centimeter to millimeter, it is small to big. A millimeter or a meter to millimeter, it is big to small. So you need to remember all that, that when you're moving from one bigger unit to a smaller unit, you divide, when you multiply when you're moving from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, you divide by the relevant tenths. Are there any questions? There are no questions. Then we can move to how do we calculate the perimeter of an object? A perimeter, in a way, it is the distance around the figure or the object. Um, so if you are in a house, the perimeter of a house will be the walls outside. You just measuring the walls outside the house. That is the perimeter. And we can calculate the perimeter of a rectangle and the perimeter of a rectangle, like I said, because we just adding up, the perimeter of a rectangle will be adding all the sides of the rectangle. The rectangle has the length and the width, length and the width. So it will be length plus width plus length plus width, which is the same as two times length plus width. To <clears throat> calculate um, the perimeter of a square, a square has four length of four sides that are equal and they are denoted by length. So we can calculate the length plus the length plus the length plus the length, which is the same as four times the length. The perimeter of a triangle, it's easy because we just add all the sides. If this has the side P, Q, R, then we just add the side P, Q, R. The only object that when you calculate the perimeter is not as straightforward as adding all the sides because it does not have the sides. It, it is round, round in its nature. It's the circle. To calculate the perimeter of a circle, 
we use the formula 2 pi r, where our pi, you're going to use the function on your calculator. If you don't know the function on your calculator, you must go and look for it. If you are using a Casio calculator, your pi will be at the bottom next to the comma or the decimal next to the answer. There is a button with x times 10 to the power. It's got a pi function, pi function next to it. It's written in orange. You will have to press the shift first and then press the pi button. If you are using a Casio for, um, calculator, you just need to look for the same pi function. If it's written in orange for Casio, you press shift for sharp whether it's sharp financial calculator or sharp uh, scientific calculator, you will press second function and you will press the pi button. Just look for that pi button. Do not use 32 divided by seven, use the actual pi function when you are calculating. Your R is your radius. Your radius is the distance between the outside of the side of the other side of the circle to the other side. So from this side to that side, we have what we call a diameter. And a diameter, when it is split into two equal parts, it creates what we call a midpoint. And that midpoint creates two equal parts, of which one of them we call it the radius. So you will need to remember that that for a circle, we use 2 pi r. Your pi is the function on your calculator. Your r is your radius, which is half of your diameter. Okay, so let's look at how we calculate the perimeter. So since the rectangle has four equal, oh, so four sides, two opposite equals um, equal sides, so we use the formula, um, C is equals to 2 times L plus W. And if we need to calculate the perimeter of a rectangle with the length of 80, so we're going to state what we are given, the length of 30 meters and the width of 8 meters. The width of 8 meters. So there we've got what we are given. And the question is, we need to calculate the perimeter and we know what the formula is. And we can then just substitute because we already identified all the facts that we need to answer the question. So substituting into the formula, we know that formula is C is equal to two. Um, and the perimeter is always referred to with the C and a C in a way it's also called a circumference, a circumference and the perimeter, one and the same thing when it comes to measurements. So C is equals to two times L plus W. Our L is 30, our W is eight, so 30 plus eight. The other thing that I need to, I need you to pay attention to is to always remember in maths, we use what we call the Bodmas rule. If you don't want to apply the Bodmas rule and you want to use your calculator and do everything on your calculator, always remember to use your brackets. It is very, very important that you also include your brackets. Do not say two times 30 plus eight. It's not going to give you the right answer because the Bodmas rule says brackets first, then addition and subtraction comes later, uh, division and multiplication before addition and subtraction. So please remember that, that you need to apply the Bodmas rule, or if you are using your calculator, always to include, include the brackets. So 30 plus 8 is 38, 38 multiplied by 2 is 76, and the perimeter of this rectangle is equal to 76 meters. Sometimes 
in your modules, they might give you the units in meters and then they expect you in your options, they give you the answer in another unit. Therefore, they expect you to know how to convert from one unit to the other, like we did um, just now, converting from one unit to the other unit. So you must pay attention to the options as well. This is your exercise. And on this one, I'm not going to do it for you. You are going to give me the answer. Calculate the circumference of the following figure. Remember circumference, perimeter, one and the same thing. An area with the length, or oh, sorry, a rectangle with the length of 15 centimeter and the width of 8 centimeter. We want the circumference of this figure. Let me know when you are done. Yes, okay. Hmm? Okay. And that, and that is correct, correct, yes. Anyone who wants to explain it, so that then I'm not the only one to So we are told that our length is 15 centimeter. Our width is eight centimeter and we know what the formula is c is equals to two times the length plus the width or breadth uh, length plus breadth or length plus width it will still mean one in the same um two times our length of 15 plus our width of eight and Two times twenty three, which is equals to forty six centimeters. That's how you will answer the question. Easy, right? Same for the square. It has four equal sides. And if we need to calculate the perimeter of the square with the length of eighty, we know what the formula is. So we know that. This length and that length and this length and this length are the same. They are 80 centimeters. The formula is C is equals to 4 times L. So since we are asked to calculate the perimeter and the perimeter is adding all the sides, we can then substitute into our formula and calculate. 4 L is the same as 4 times 80. And that gives us the perimeter of 320 centimeters. Easy, right? I'm tempted to say also do this exercise. Should be quick and easy. Calculate the perimeter of a square with 27. Centimeters.
A square has four sides, right? A square has four sides. So let's look at the formula. Even if you don't look at the formula, because we are adding the sides, it's easy. It's 27 plus 27 plus 27 plus 27 plus 27. So the, you will add 427. Yes, that's correct. So we know that this length is 27. This is 27. This is 27. This is 27. The formula is C is equal to 4 times L. And therefore, it will be 4 times 27, which is equal to 108 centimeters. I got a little confused with uh, 4. So <laughs> I put the two instead of the four and then I got it wrong. But thank you for correcting me. No worries. No worries. So for a triangle, it has three sides. So we just use, we add all the sides. P plus Q plus R will give us the perimeter. Calculate the perimeter of a triangle with the sides. 10 centimeter, 7 centimeter, and 6 centimeters. Just making assumptions. If this is 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter, 7 centimeter, and 6 centimeter, I just add all of them. So, perimeter meaning adding all the sides. The formula for a triangle is. A plus B plus C or P plus Q plus R, depending on the sides that are labeled. So our C will be 10 plus 7 plus 6, which gives us 23 centimeters. Calculate the circumference of the following figure of this triangle with the sides 33 centimeter, 27 centimeter, and 25 centimeter. The other easy one. It's easy when they give you normal figures like this. Eighty five centimeter. Yes. We know that it's the C is equal to since I don't have letters on this, I can just add the values plus twenty five plus twenty seven, which gives me eighty five centimeters. And that is the circumference of a triangle. For a cycle, a cycle has a diameter, and in the middle of that diameter, it's what we call the midpoint, and the distance between a midpoint and the diameter, it's called a radius. Whether I move from here to there, that will still be my radius from here, to year, that will still be my radius. From year to year, that is my radius. From year to the radius, as long as it's from the midpoint to the side of the circle, it is still referred to as the, the radius. And a diameter 
is made up of two radiuses. To calculate the circumference of a circle, we use 2 pi r and our example, calculate the circumference of a circle with a radius of 4 centimeters. Oh, sorry, of 4 meters. Here they gave us the radius, so it makes it easy to substitute. In the exam or in the assignment, they might not give you the radius, but they might give you a diameter. Always remember that. If they gave you a diameter, you just need to make sure that you divide that diameter by two so that you create a radius. So, we are told what the radius is. We just come and substitute into our formula. C is equal to 2 pi i. C is equal to 2 times pi times 4. Remember to use the function from your calculator. If you are using, if you are, are using a ratio, remember it is shift and the button where it is written exp or 10 to the power of x, something exponent. There is a pi function there. You must use that. So that will be 2 times shift pi times 4 equals, I do get 25.13. Your question. Calculate the circumference of this figure with the radius of eight millimeters. So we know that the circumference is 2 pi r, and we are told what the r is, is 2 pi times 8. And the answer, I don't know what kind of calculators you have. If you're not struggling with your calculators. Do you have an answer? Yes, I get also 26 point, I'm oh sorry, 50.27. And the answer will be 50.27 millimeters. It's easy when you have um normal shapes when you have what we call irregular shapes so there we had regular shapes right like your triangle rectangle circle and a square those we call them regular shape when you have irregular shape and they ask you to calculate perimeter still the same concept applies because the perimeter is adding all the outside you just add this side plus that side plus this side plus that side. The same on this um, uh, shape. You're going to add all this side. Even if it's on a five, uh, it's got five sides. You're just going to add all the five sides. A perimeter means adding all the sides. So calculate the perimeter of an irregular shape with five sides of 14 centimeter, 9 centimeter, 11 centimeter, 13 centimeter, and 7 centimeter. So because it's five sides, I can use this. If this one is 14 centimeter, 
doesn't have to be like this much. 14 centimeter, 9 centimeter, 11 centimeter, um, 13 centimeter, and 7 centimeter. With the perimeter, I just add all the sides. So it's 14 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13 plus 7, which will give me 54 centimeters. That makes it easier when you have an irregular shape. So now let I'm not going to ask you to answer this because it's the same exercise like that. So let's look at when you have a composite site. A composite site is a, a figure or a composite figure. It's a figure that has two in one or multiple figures that you can see from the graph. Because if I, if I cut this either here, at that point, I will be creating two rectangles. If I cut this figure at this point, I might be creating a square, but I'm not sure if this is a square, but I mean, it might be two different figures. So those we call them composite figures. So to calculate the perimeter of a composite figure, it also still the same applies because it's adding up all the sides. Now, the challenge comes when some of the sides are not labeled or do not have values. So from this point to that point, which is this figure, which I can call it X, there is no amount, so we don't know what is the distance between that and that. Also, from this point to that point, I can call it Y, there is no number. However, we are given some other side. We are given from this side to that side, from this point to this point, we are told that it is 25 centimeters. And we are also told that from here to there, it's eight centimeter. If I extend this, the distance between that point from here to here should be the same as the distance between that point to that point. So it means the distance will be 25. Then it means I should be able to find this missing part Y. So this missing part Y, I can calculate it by adding Y plus 20. Y plus 8 should be equals to 25, right? Y plus 8 should be equals to 25, or Y should be 25 minus 8, because I know what 8 is. Say the distance from here to there, we don't know it's X, but the distance from this point to that point there is 30 centimeter. So it means if I know the distance from this point to that point, and it's four centimeter, I can find my X, and my X will be the same as 30 minus four, because uh, I know the length of this piece, it's four centimeters. So in order for me to add the sides, I know that I'm adding by 30, plus 25, plus 8, plus 4, and I'm going to add my x, which is 30 minus 4, see there, and I'm going to add my y, which is 25 minus 8, and that gives me the composite figure has the perimeter of 110 centimeters. Is it right? Yes, um, sorry to interrupt, ma'am. I just mm -hmm. wanted to ask you. Um, so we're busy with perimeter right now, and perimeter. I'm just wanting clarification on this. Does that mean that we always add, and if we do the area, we multiply? Yeah. So I'm gonna get to the perimeter to the area just now. So the I perimeter. Just, oh, perimeter we add. Yeah. Yeah. We add the outside. Okay. Right? Cool. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So in the exam, 
I just used a simple question, right? To help you answer uh, the simple figures. In the exam, you don't get simple figures. You get figures like this. But if you understand the concept of a perimeter, then it should be easy for you to answer this question. Now, the other option here is this is a half a circle. It's not a full circle. We know that a circle circumference is 2 pi. Ah, since it's half, we're going to divide it by 2 to split it into 2. And therefore, the circumference of this will just be pi r. So in order for us to add the circumference of this whole picture that we have, and they say we need to calculate the circumference of the following figure, then we're going to calculate the circumference by adding this piece that we have, which is pi r plus 6 centimeters, right? Let me remove the centimeters. We will deal with them when we're done. Six plus, we also need this length, which is 4.8 plus, we also need to remember this. It is two centimeters. So I don't want the centimeters plus the six centimeters. Plus an again, another six centimeters. So now, how do I find the radius of this? They told me in terms of this uh, line, the dotted line, it says from this distance to that distance, it is four centimeters. So therefore it means from there to there, it will be four centimeters. So my radius is four. So you just say pi times four plus six plus 4.8 plus two plus six, and that will give you the circumference of this figure. And that will be equals to 31.37. 31.37 centimeter. That is the circumference of this figure. So let's see in the next 20 minutes if we can cover the rest of the other session. We're not going to spend most, more time on the next one. So we're going to be able to calculate the area of different regular shapes as well, like the rectangle, the square, the triangle, and the pi. And always remember that the area, because we are multiplying, the unit will be squared because it's multiplying the units by two. So you multiply the units twice by itself. So it will be squared. Um, the area of a rectangle, it will be length times width. And if we need to find the area of a rectangle with the length of 30 and the width of 8, we know that our length is 30, the width is 8. The formula is A is equals to L times W. You substitute the values into the formula and you will find the area will be equals to 30 meters times 8 meters, which is equivalent to 240 meter squared because it is meters times meters. So the area of a square is given by L squared because there are sides. So one thing you need to remember, the perimeter we said is the outside. The area we talking about the shaded part, the all this red part, right? That is the area. So we calculating from this end to that end, this end to that end. Which I never knew that. Yes. I so never even knew that. <laughs> that is, 
if if you have been in a um uh, uh, a house and you bought tires you will always remember when you go buy tires they like how many square meters how many because they are counting the area of the room okay. so you, you use the flat side from wall to wall mm. the area yes so for a square we use l times l which is l squared so if the length is 80 centimeters so it will be 80 times 80 which is 64000 meter squared for a triangle it's different your triangle has to have a right angled in order for you to have this height So they will give you a, a, a triangle with a 90 degree uh, line, which creates a 90 degree line, a perpendicular line to where the base is. So if they create a 90 degree here, then it means Q is your base. If they create it here, then it means P is your base. So you need to pay attention to the 90 degree angle. So your 90 degree angles, it's parallel to your base. Oh, sorry, it's perpendicular to your base. So your height will be the line that creates a 90 degree perpendicular line to your base. And the area of a triangle is calculated by using half times base times height. So if we have a triangle with the base of seven and the height of six, we just substitute into that formula. So if our height is six and our base is seven, you just come to the formula and substitute half times seven times six will give you 21 centimeter squared. And that is a triangle. For a cycle, we use pi r squared so this is for a full circle we use pi r squared remember r is your radius d is your diameter and pi is the function on your calculator if we need to calculate the area of a circle with the radius of 14 meters then we just substitute in our 14 into r and we get the area of a circle to be 615.75 meters squared. I'm not gonna worry about number A, we're gonna do number B. B says calculate the area of the shaded part. Now, this is a composite figure. Why am I saying it's a composite figure? Because they've got a circle and the white area is a rectangle because the side of one side of a rectangle is three centimeters and the other side is four centimeters. So it has two opposite equal sides. And they also gave us the, the diameter, but not the radius, because now I'm, I'm trying to figure out what am I given? What are my facts here? So the point from here to the other side, it's got a midpoint of five centimeters, so therefore this is my diameter. So it means in order for me to find my radius, I'm going to say D divided by two, which is five divided by two, which will be 2.5. So my radius will be equal to 2.5, but that is not the end. They say I need to calculate this shaded area. And this shaded area, so area of the shaded part, is given by the circle, area of a circle minus the area of my length times my breadth, because it's I need to take away this box. In order for me to find only the shaded area, I need to remove the box. And removing the box is your rectangle. So then my pi times my radius 
of 2.5 squared minus times my length of 4 times my radi um, my breadth or width of 3. And this will be equals to 2.5 squared times pi. It's equals to 19.63. And I'm going to subtract. Say equal first 2.5 squared times pi equals 19.63. Minus into bracket 12. Actually, I should have just said 12 because 4 times 3 is 12. Minus minus 12, and the answer we get is 7.6. Me centimeter squared. You must also remember the cent the the units, which are centimeter centimeters. If in the exam sometime they give you two units that are different, please convert one to the other so that you work him with the same unit. The last section that we need to look at is the volume so in order for us to calculate the volume the volume is how much can we fit into a cube or a cylinder or a can you know that in a can how much can we fit um, how much drink can we fit into that can that is the volume. It's the it measures the capacity of the three-dimension object. So I'm going to look at three of them, uh, the cube, prism, and a cylinder. A cube, it's a square, a prism, rectangle, and a cylinder is for a circle. Now, we're going to use the area and also the height because if you look at the square, let's take the one at the top. If you look at the square, this square is extended by the, the height, right? And it has another square at the bottom, but because we're only interested in the volume, we're going to calculate the area of this, multiply it with the height. The same, a rectangle, it is elevated by a height. Say a circle is elevated by the height. So we're going to use the area, multiply the area with the height. That's the formula. If you forget how to calculate the volume, just always remember only those things. So the volume of a cube will be your L times L times L, which is L times L is L squared times L, which is the height, um, makes the volume to be L cubed. Now, with a prism, then it's length times breadth, remember, that is the area of a rectangle, times the height of that rectangle. For a cylinder, you're going to use your area of a circle times the height. So you can see that it's pi r squared times h, um, and that those are the formulas that we're going to be using. So let's look at, uh, before we look at how we calculate this. Um, with, when it comes to volume, sometimes they will give you the figures in meters and millimeters and centimeters, and then you need to convert it to liters. And that's why you need to know and remember the conversion table. It is very, very important. You need to always constantly remember that one liter is equivalent 
to 1000 centimeter cubed. And it is equal, equivalent to 100, uh, sorry, not 100, 1000 milliliters, right? So one liter is equivalent to 1000 centimeters is equivalent to 1000 milliliters. So therefore it means centimeter cube is equivalent to millimeter. I don't understand anything to say. I'm not good. <laughs> so you need to always remember that, that a liter is made up of 1000 centimeter cubed and a milliliter is the same as your centimeter cubes. Otherwise, you can also apply any of the um, units changes because you need to be able to convert. If they give it to you in meters, you need to be able to convert it to uh, liters because we're talking about volume. Volume is always measured in liters and milliliters. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, questions. Um, we'll see how far we get because this is the end of the session. Um, a circular water reservoir has a maximum capacity of 10,000 kiloliters and its diameter is 30 meters. Now, if you look at the two things, not in the same units, right? So it means we need to do some conversion. So we have kiloliters and we have meters. So going back to the table, we need to look for kiloliters and meters. On this one, it didn't even give me the kiloliters and meters. Kiloliters and meters. So we will have to convert our meters into liters. Let's see. One meter, 1,000 meter is equivalent to one kilometer. But that is not equivalent to, let me just double check something. Volume, right? One is there a thing called kiloliter? Did that not show? No, it's not there. As it's another, don't worry, you're not alone. Okay, because we need to convert meters to liters. So, um, the only thing that uh, weighs me off is this kiloliter. What is a kiloliter? Can I assume that in terms of Kiloliter will be equivalent to because kilo cubic kilometer or cubic kiloliter cubic kilo kilo kilometer cubic kilometer is km cubed and then what is cubic? What is kiloliter? Let's let's Google that. Let's start. Um, I'm gonna waste more time with that. There is Google kilo kiloliter. 
let's convert kilolita to meter. Kilolita to meter. It will be easier if I work with meters cubed, meter cubed or centimeter cubed. So kiloliter, one kiloliter is equivalent to one cubic meter. One cubic, cubic meters, right? That's what I get. So is it the same as milliliters? So no, one kiloliter is equivalent to one, one. cubic meter, which is centi centimeter cubed, right? Yeah, it's the same as milliliters on the on the conversion chart you showed us before this page. Okay, so let's go there. There's a so we said one cubic meter is equivalent to one milliliter. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I wanted to find out. So now we know that this is the same as milliliter. Milliliter. So a thousand milliliters. But here we have meters. We need to convert meters to centimeters because this is the same as uh, 10,000 centimeter cubed. So we need to convert this. to centimeters so that we work with the same units, centimeter, centimeter cube, they will be one and the same. Now, they want to know how deep, how deep it means height, right? So we are told the volume of this circular revel, uh, reservoir, which is pi r, squared times height. And we are told that the diameter, we need to convert 30. So that's the other thing. We need to convert 30 meters to centimeters. So that is the length conversion. 30 meters to centimeters. So we have 30 meters because it's from big to small, we multiply by 10. Therefore, it means it is the similar to uh, multiply by 1000, uh, by 100. We'll multiply by 100, which will be 3000 centimeter. Okay, so now if we know that we have the 3,000 or 300. I think it's 300. We multiply by 100. So it's 30. No, it's 30 meter to centimeter. So we multiply by 1,000. Yes, it's right. It's 3,000. So now, let's write this. Yeah. When I write it here at the bottom. So, so V is equal to pi r squared times height. Mm? Sorry for interrupting. So because the, uh, the diameter is 30 meters now and we get it on 3000 centimeters, do yes. we divide it by two? Yes, because we need to find the radius. So the okay. radius will be 3000 divided by two, which is 1500. And then now. Yeah. We are told what the capacity is. It's 10,000. We're going to use the same unit. So it's 10,000 cubic meters. So it's 10,000 is equal to pi times 1,500 squared. And H is what we don't know. Mm -hmm. Dividing this side by pi of 1,500 
squared and divide the site by pi of 1500 squared. So this site and that will cancel and you'll be left with H of equals to 10,000. So we're going to use calculator. So we have 10,000 divided by pi times 1,500 squared. And the height is equals to Zero point zero zero one four. Am I calculating it right? I got zero comma zero zero one four one four seven one zero six. And this will be in centimeters. So if I need to convert it back to meters, I need to divide times divide. or divide. Divide because we multiplied convert from is thirty meters equivalent to three thousand centimeters. So let's see. 30 meters is equivalent to 3,000 centimeters. And we divide the that by 2, which is 1,000. 300, 1,500, if we convert it to meters. And did we convert correctly? One cubic meters is equivalent to one milliliters, which is equivalent to one kiloliter, or a thousand kilo. Oh, it is equivalent, and we said, ma'am, there was another conversion table that you showed us in the beginning of the sesh that showed us how to get from millimeters to centimeter. There's a yeah, but the, uh, yeah, so when we get from millimeter to centimeter, we divide by a thousand a, a hundred. When we get from centimeter to millimeter, we multiply by a hundred. That's why we multiply thirty by. By 100, 100. To get 3,000. So now, now I'm going to go from I'm, centimeters back to meters. Yes, now I am. I, I, I don't want to go back there, but I want to double check the cubic, this kiloliters. Yeah. Right? So we said one kiloliter is equivalent to one centimeter cube. That's yeah. what we said. Oh, sorry. Go back to Google. So it says one kiloliter. So if I have 10,000 kiloliters, it says it's equivalent to 10,000 cubic, cubic meters. Oh, cubic meters, not cubic centimeter. I think I wrote the, the cubic wrong. Oh, did we do the whole sum wrong? 
not really so what a uh what is what how do we write cubic meter cubic meter is m cube yeah m cube right yes so it means yeah we did this one wrong here yeah. it's one m cube so if it's one m cube um oh yeah one m cube is equivalent to 1000 liters then if 1000 liters is equivalent to one meter cubed cubic meters and therefore um then what will be and we know that one liter is equivalent to 1000 centimeters right but not to centimeter cubed but not to meter cubed so we need to be able to convert from meter cubed to centimeter cube. How do we convert there? Let's see. Meter cubed. Two. Centimeter. Uh, two centimeter cube. So one, one meter cube, okay, I've got it. One meter cube, one meter cube is equivalent to a million. One, oh, oh, one, oh, oh. It's equivalent to one million centimeter cubed. Okay, so it means we need to go back there. We didn't do the conversion right here. So this should be equals to a million centimeter cubed. Centimeter cubed. And therefore it means here we dividing by a million centimeter cubed. And that's hence our answer here will change. This will be yeah. centimeter cubed, and this will be centimeter. Oh, sorry. Inside, yeah, will be centimeter. Centimeter. Then it will be squared. And that will convert to centimeter squared, and it will say three minus two will be centimeters. So if a that's why, and in the exam you will need to know these things by heart, how to convert from one unit to the other, which is very difficult. You can see. <laughs> so Sorry, I wish good. you all the best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> one million. <laughs> Divide by um, uh, one million divided by i oh, times one thousand five hundred squared, which is then equals to zero point one four, and this will be in centi centimeters, and if the they want you to bring it back to meters, then you will say it is equivalent to um, uh, if we take it back to meters. 
So this will be centimeters to meters. And we go down to 0.14. It will be 0 0.0014 for height, or which will be very small height. Okay, so that is. That is how you, oh, no, no, I didn't divide by a million. Sorry, my bad. What's wrong with me? So that won't be one zero comma because I didn't. Ma'am, how did you no. get the loss? Or how, do, how are we going to convert it from the centimeters to the height? Uh, because it's, wait, let, let's get the, the answer right because I, I also got the answer wrong now. So the answer should be one million not 100,000, but a million divided by pi times 1,500 squared. And then the, oh, the answer I did, is... Yes, I did get it right. Sorry, my bad. Yes, you did 0 0.14, right? Yes. So is that the answer, 0 0.14? Yes, so it will depend on... Uh, whether they did ask you that the answer in the options is it in in centimeters or oh, is it in meters? meters? So if it's yeah. in meters, then you just convert it to meters because it's height. Height is either in meters or centimeters. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. I get it. Okay, okay. thank you so much, ma'am. No problem. You are welcome. And that concludes today's um, session. The next session we're going to be dealing with ratios and proportions if you have any questions feel free to ask um we are over in with 10 minutes i just want the conversion tables to study them is there any way i can get those uh they are on the notes just stay on the on on the line right now um i just need to to stop the recording Stay there. Let's close the recording before Elisa kills me.